Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. So I'm here today with Bryce's RB20 that I am doing a bit of a rebuild on. So I'm going to be doing a head gasket, ARP studs, full kind of overhaul on the motor and get everything up to spec, get it all back to how it should be. Uh, so he actually had a Welsh plug pop out on the back of the motor, as you can see there, and obviously spat all the coolant out and from there we're thinking it's blown the head gasket. Um, either way, going to be doing the head gasket and studs because this does make shy of 400 horsepower on E85. So it's making a lot of power for the old RB20. So we're just going to kind of future proof it a bit and change all the gaskets that probably haven't been touched for the past who knows how many years. So we'll be doing all of that. Um, I'm just going to crack on doing bits and pieces. I'll update you as I go. Um, doing a timing belt, water pump, all servicing kind of stuff. So I'll just start with pulling stuff off and update you as I go. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is pull off this engine loom just because it looks real messy in the way. And once that's gone, it'll give me a good look on what's actually here. Uh, so obviously the whole looms come off disconnected from the ECU. So I'll pull all of that off and get it all off as one piece. And that can go into the box of parts. Uh, like I usually do, I'll be putting bolts in plastic bags and labelling them so I know exactly where they go, just to keep things nice and organised and makes it easier to put things back together. Um, top half of his plenum has already come off, so that was dropped off already off the car. So top half of the plenum, got the clutch fan down there, uh, flywheel's obviously off, and the backing plate. That stuff's all sitting down there, all good. So um, yeah, I'll get this loom off and get it all laid out on the ground and see what we're working with. So I've got majority of the loom all disconnected. Still got a few bits and pieces down here to get off. Um, knock sensors, oil pressure switch, a um, few little earthing cables, alternator wiring, that kind of stuff. Pretty much everything from up the top's all undone. So uh, crank angle sensor, coolant temp stuff, injectors. Um, this is something that I haven't seen before. Um, I believe this is an igniter, which is a different way of working the ignition compared to the 25s where they just use coil pack. Um, so don't know a whole heap about them, but that's going to have to come off. Just a couple of Allen key bolts, um, and obviously the rocker cover, valley cover will come off as well. Um, and then that should be able to let me get the whole loom out of the way, I'll put that aside, and can get the next parts off. So that's the whole engine harness out. I'll just separate that. So that's going to be the gearbox side that will run obviously down to the gearbox, and then up to the battery and the fuse box. So. Now that this is all out of the way, as I'm going along I'm finding more problems with the, the motor so I'm just letting Bryce know as I go through and doing up a bit of a list on extra bits that he will need. Uh, right off the bat, that coil pack loom is knackered, like it's completely stiff, has got no flex in it at all and then half the plugs if it'll focus on that. So that's like a, a good plug with the plastic insert, if we can get focus, so that one's good. And then we've got ones like that, which have just got pins just hanging there, and three out of the six are like that. So luckily with RBs, that section of the loom unplugs from the rest of the harness, so that runs to the igniter box, So or whatever it is called. I believe it's an igniter, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we'll pull that off and replace that section of the loom. I've also noticed as well, a few rocket cover bolts are missing, and all the little bushes that sit under said bolts are all falling apart. Um, and that's what's going to give it a, a proper seal against the rocker cover, uh, protect the paint. Just another little bonus out of it, but these are all like that's just falling apart there. So, we got a new set of those, a few bolts are just missing completely. So, rocker cover bolts down there, just missing over in this corner, just missing completely. Um, and if we're going to be doing the gaskets, we might as well do it all properly um, while we're there. You know, just a random 8mm bolt rather than the normal ones. Just going to get it all right for him and it's going to cost a bit more money to do it right but at least it's going to be done once and done right um, it is good it has got the split fire coil packs so that's a bonus they'll all just pull out um, it looks like these have a little adapter plate or something similar like i was saying haven't worked on rb20s before it's my first time um, so compared to the rb25 where they bolt straight to the the head's a little bit different but by the looks of things just those 12 more bolts through the middle that'll all pull out as one big piece hopefully and um, yeah, we'll keep pulling bits and pieces off and expose the rest of this motor. Next thing will probably just be that other loom 
and then that's all the wiring out of the way and that tidies things up quite a bit can move all that aside so it doesn't get tangled up in everything so um, yeah I'll keep going on with it and see you guys when I pick up the camera next. So more little differences between the RB20 and 25. Uh, I mean, this is a big learning experience for me as well, so hopefully you guys can learn something as well. The RB20s actually have a separate harness for the knock sensors, so that just plugs into the main harness, where on 25s, they're a part of this gearbox loom harness, which is, it's good. I do like that they separate these because these knock sensors are really bad for just breaking apart when you pull them off. Um, you kind of have to squeeze both sides of the sensor to pop them off and it's just a single pin so they do rip out quite easily. Um, these ones luckily came off nicely and this loom has got a lot more flexibility. It's still a little bit stiff but more flexibility than the coil pack harness loom so this one will be good. We'll add this to the pile of bits and pieces that were pulled off and um, we'll get this other loom off here. Just got a few alternator plugs to pull off and that should be all good. I've also noticed going through that this will need a fair few hoses. So, I mean, this one here is off a Camry, just a random hose, which is just crushed in there, which is just restricting the flow. And you kind of crush the hose and that's all full of crap. So that's probably half the reason it blew out a Welsh plug. All these hoses are all full. It's the same in every single hose through here, so clean out what we can and replace what we can. Um, it's going to cost to buy new hoses. The radiator hoses all feel pretty good, um, but it's just going to be those little ones down through the bottom there. We might as well replace what we can while we're here, um, just to make things easier. So, um, yeah, I'll pull this loom off and update you guys on. Alrighty, so we've got that alternator harness out, and that's really opened up this side of the motor. Um, I'll pull this earthing strap off that runs to the chassis, get that off and out of the way. Um, I was just looking as well, luckily he's left the nut for that engine mount on there. That one's all good, but coming over to this side, got no nut on that side and that mount is loose as, and you can't actually get to that while it's in the car, so who knows how long that mount has been loose, but that'll have to be tightened up and we'll have to find the nut for that. So I've just got this spaghetti of water hoses that have just come off um, and it looks like I mean that one's blocked the main water line which usually feeds the turbo is also blocked so these two by the looks of things would run to the heater core for the heater so by the looks of things I don't know if this is going to be needed so I had a chat to Bryce and he said the heater doesn't actually go anyway so we might be able to rather than replacing all these hoses um, we can spend the money on actually deleting the heater side of things and that'll get rid of all this random stuff and I mean with that out of the way you see how much room it actually opens up on the side of the motor there um, around the back and everything and it just really cleans things up so that'll be something I'll, um, I'll have a chat to the guys at Kudos and see if there's an option available to delete that kind of stuff and if it's a, a good way to go. Sorry for the random cut, my battery just ran out. I've been recording a fair bit. A lot of the videos you've been seeing have all been recorded in the past few days for me, so running out of battery very quickly. But um, yeah, I'll have a chat to Kudos and see if there's an option to just block all of this stuff off. I mean, we've got all these outlets that all operate the heater hose, like that one up there on the corner of the manifold and on the block and off the thermostat. And if it's really necessary, then we can replace the hoses. Otherwise, I don't see a point in trying to spend all the money replacing hoses for something that doesn't work anyway. So we'll um, probably pull the manifold off now and completely clear this side of the motor. Alrighty, so intake side of the motor is now completely exposed. I've got the manifold off. Uh, they're all quite modular, so it all comes off as one big piece. You just make sure everything's disconnected and then you've got all your bolts that connect to the block. We've just got those nicely laid out down there. So you've got a couple of studs that locate it. And I've just set everything up in order that they came off so I know where they went. Because um, there are slight length variances between the, the nuts and bolts. So as long as you know where they go, happy days. I'll probably just take a photo of this as it sits. And then a photo of that so I know exactly where each bolt goes back. Um, just to make sure I don't bottom out any bolts or have any dramas. So now that intake side's knocked over, I think I'm going to pull all this front cover stuff off and all the accessories. And then once that's done, move over to the exhaust side, obviously the, the coolest side of the motor. So I'll um, 
get started on pulling all this stuff apart. This is kind of the collection of stuff we've got. The lighting sucks. It's probably a bit better. So not a lot of stuff's come off. It just looks like a lot's come off. So we get all this stuff off the front and then yeah, powering along quite well. Been at it for probably two hours or so and getting there pretty quickly. So within the next couple of hours, hopefully should have the head off and can get it sent off, get the machine, get it all cleaned up and get some parts, get it all back together for him. So I've got the upper timing cover off and looks like we've got adjustable exhaust and intake cam gears, which is cool from Golby's. Um, should be very similar for timing. Looks like they've got timing marks still. I haven't actually played around with adjustable cam gears before, so don't know a whole lot about them. Obviously the, well, each mark, two degrees of crank, so I'd assume they'd be advancing or retarding the timing on a certain cam gear. Um, but yeah, definitely a bit different. But lucky we are doing a timing belt, because this one is definitely quite worn. I don't know if the camera will pick up all the, um, the stretch marks through it, but definitely seen better days so we'll do the timing belt do our water pump um, but yeah for now pull off all these other bits off the front of the motor and mark it bag it put it all aside and continue on so with a little bit of WD-40 and my puller I've been able to get the harmonic balancer off which is then let me get the lower cover off and then that's your timing belt and all the timing gear there um, and obviously water pump running behind so what I'm going to do from here is start pulling off the exhaust side. Um, I want to get everything exposed before I pull the timing belt off. Um, just so we don't have any problems with anything hitting things that it shouldn't. So um, yeah, I'll chuck the bolt back in, set some markings just so I know where everything is. And it'll be a good chance while it's apart to go ahead and um, clean everything up for him and just make sure it all looks nice as it goes back together. You know, this stuff here, it's all just caked on just crap who knows how many years so I'm gonna pull it all off um, give it all a proper brush down in some soapy water get everything cleaned uh, because we are changing all the gaskets in this well pretty much all of them we've got a full RB20 gasket kit so almost every gasket will be changed so fingers crossed there won't be any oil leaks um, but yeah what we'll be doing is making sure everything's clean so when it does go back together it'll be a nice clean motor with no oil leaks and it'll be ready to be chucked back into the 32. So for this video, I'm just gonna leave it with where we're at currently with the timing all exposed. I've set the timing to where it should be just so I know when I pull it all apart that I haven't forgot to set it to the correct markings. Um, in the next video, we'll get started on pulling off the exhaust side and exposing all of that and then from there being able to pull the head off so i'll see you guys in the next video if you enjoyed it make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel it really means a lot thanks guys bye